Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and to another video in South Wales. Today we were so excited to be able to explore the famous Castef Cock. The drive here is just north of Cardiff. You can actually spot the castle up the vast woodlands as you are driving down the M4 with its cylindrical turrets and pointed rooftops. This castle is worthy of the Disney characters Rapunzel or Sleeping Beauty. We were delighted to get the chance to explore here and discover the lavish interiors inside. Join us as we discover who built this fairy tale folly and find out more about how it got its iconic design and why it's one of Wales's most visited castles. After walking over the impressive drawbridge and staring up at the elegant building with conical towers, our visit today led us straight into the main rooms within the stronghold that gave us a small introduction to the castle and its backstory, including a family tree and a historic timeline and more interactive exhibits. Then leading up the first set of spiral staircases, they follow on to different floors and exhibits and the upper courtyard that you are able to come across that include several rooms until you reach the ramparts for an overview of the beautiful wooded parklands. Going back to its origins, the first castle on the site was more than likely built after 1081, during the Norman invasion of Wales. It formed a string of eight fortifications that intended to defend the newly conquered town of Cardiff and tried to control the route along the Taff Gorge. It took form of a raised earthwork moat that was protected by the surrounding steep slopes of the forest floor. The castle itself is often described as a rich man's folly, but there is much more to the castle than a mere folly. In fact, a better and more accurate description might be a rich couple's love nest. It was in 1760 that these abandoned and forgotten ruins were bought by the Earl of Bute. It was in 1848 that the third Marquis of Bute, John Crichton Stuart, inherited the castle and the great family fortune. And it was then in 1871 that he turned to his chief engineer to clear up the debris and cleanse the ruins. After this time, William Burgess, the architect, was employed and the reconstruction of the castle began later in 1875. Although Burgess died six years later, his plans continued through with his team of assistants and craftsmen and the reconstruction was completed at the end of the 19th century. But together, they had already created an extraordinary Victorian vision of a medieval castle in a richly decorated Gothic style. You're able to walk into the room at the top of the Well Tower, which used to be a private chapel. 
it's here that 10 of the 20 stained glass windows are housed, and the other 10 are at the nearby Cardiff Castle. And it's said that each of the stained panels had a meaning to the religious Lord Bute. There is a panel here that depicts the Saint of Wales, St David. They have also put seating in around, so you can sit and appreciate just how beautiful they look and put yourself in Lord Bute's shoes when he was up here sitting and listening. While there is actually no main feature in the courtyard, except maybe just the fact that it's the courtyard of the castle itself, it does give you an absolutely priceless moment to look up and down the magnificent walls of the castle around you. It's definitely a surreal feeling to be standing on the ramparts of the courtyard and being able to peer over the ledges down to see the views. You can really see everything that's going on too, with the many windows that circle the castle. The way that they have portrayed the working kitchen is great too, with a huge range that they would have had servants prepare the meals and cook for the lord and lady when entertaining guests, and even a serving hatch that leads on to the banqueting hall next door is really interesting to see. The kitchen was more functional than luxurious compared to the other rooms in the castle. It's been laid out as if it's still in use with pots, pans and other utensils. Before we headed into the banqueting hall, we took a detour upstairs to Lady Margaret Crichton Stewart's bedchambers, who occupied the castle and made numerous visits to it during the 1900s. She was accompanied by her bereaving widowed mother, the third Marchioness of Butte. The bedroom consisted of cream-painted French-style furniture throughout that was designed by William Burgess. The steps as you leave Margaret's bedroom are closed off to the public, but they were for her nanny and leads to an attic bedroom.
The Gothic Banqueting Hall occupied the first floor of the hall block and features high stenciled ceilings and colourful murals depicting a medieval theme throughout. As you look at the chimney in the room, you will also be able to see the statue of Lucius of Britain, who was a supposed second century king of the Britons. This is incredible to see up close if you get the opportunity, and it's important that you take the time looking at the different paintings and photographs here, as they really do help paint the story of the people who once lived and dined here. And if you peer out of the windows, you'll find amazing views of the forest beyond, and you can also see Cardiff. Wandering inside the drawing room is absolutely fascinating. This has to be by far our favourite room of the trip here. You're blown away by the beautifully decorated and botanical illustrations, and of course the incredible statues and the fireplace that draw you into the middle. This sumptuous, awe-inspiring room occupies both the first and second floors of the castle keep, together with a minstrel's gallery on the upper level. After speaking with the lady working inside the room, we discovered that hidden in the walls, there was a secret door that led down to a stairway. I mean, if you had the money, why wouldn't you build a secret passageway too? Some of the illustrations had stories attached to them, including famous fables like the hare and the tortoise and lesser known ones like the cat and the cheese. All around the room, they have pairs of daisies painted and it's the belief that these represented Lord and Lady Butte. One of Lord Butte's passion was that he believed in the mystical side and he was very keen on zodiac signs. Inside the room, he had installed tiles in the columns and in the theme of zodiac symbols. All these are very intricate details. They're so wonderful to discover and you'll find yourself in awe just finding different stories and different meanings. It's truly something incredible that you don't see today in other castles. Occupying the top section of the castle keep is Lady Butte's bedroom. Richly decorated and a double dome ceiling is really beautiful to see. Her large low bed is the central feature of the big room, painted in a scarlet and gold colour and topped off with crystals at each of the four corners. Love was the theme for decoration, displaying carved monkeys grapevines and nesting birds topping the pillars. Her bedroom was much more extravagant than Lord Butte's bedroom, just below on the second floor of the Keep Tower. Still decorated, but much simple and plainer features that included a geometric style that encompassed his room. The elaborate fireplace, dressing table and painted washstand are based on pieces that were made by Burgess for his own home in Kensington, London. His bedroom consists of a single bed, quite unusual, and made of copper-plated cast iron.
I think if you're planning to visit here, you need half a day to discover everything, as we still had rooms at the bottom half of the courtyard that we didn't get to explore. But that's for another trip, and for you to discover if you decide to visit here. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful support we've been receiving on the channel. It really does mean a lot to us. So if you've enjoyed today's video, why not hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Till next time.